So I just want to clarify that when I mean God, I'm not talking about any mythological figure, any preconceived notion of a person at all. Um, for me, when I talk about having a conversation with God, for me that means having a deeper conversation with the deeper part of yourself. You can call it your soul, your higher self, whatever's in us that watches our behavior, that can watch the thoughts that we're having, that can observe what's happening without judging about it. That observer that watches who we are and what we see and what we say and what we think, that's the God that I speak about. So for me, God, it's a bit uh, bullshit through going to a Catholic church and whatever. I haven't had a good uh, conditioning experience about the word God, but when I explain it to myself in that sense that that deepest part within us is God, then makes it a bit more realistic, a bit more attainable to have a conversation with that everlasting force, creative creator, whatever it is. You can fill in the blanks. Having a conversation with God isn't one of the most immaculate breathtaking conversations that you have it can be but in my experience initially the conversation <laughs> is straight to business straight to ah, the truth the truth of what the hell is really going on the truth of your real sense of emotional health or health in general what your actual baseline default level of health is when you first open the the door <laughs> and let god in and have a conversation with it there's no hey how you doing everything okay it's just a mirror and a bright light shining your deepest weaknesses exposing your deepest insecurities and people have these conversations <laughs> and they have these conversations and then they label those conversations as anxiety, depression, suicidal thoughts. They have these uncomfortable conversations with themselves all the time. And they think they're talking with the devil. And it's yin and yang. God is yin and yang. That God is the devil and the angel at the same time. But it's in my experience that the angel sends in the devil first so that you can actually see that the angel is there all along. So before going deeper, I just wanted to share what sparked this train of thought today. So I've got a very small group of male brotherhood friends that have been you know since high school and we've got a little whatsapp chat and you know we stay in touch we don't see each other much at all but we do you know get on and talk shit as you know males do and one of the brothers is uh doing his thing and sparked this conversation right and um didn't really spark it i kind of more insinuated some things for him to do but it started with him 
you know, he loves having fun and he's a strapping lad. He's a good looking dude and he loves having sex with multiple women. He's, he's, he's like the closest thing that I will be having to a, a Russell brand, just sex, drugs and alcohol and good times. And I just suggested, as I do, calling things as they should be, that it would be wise for him to stop drinking, stop having sex, and to stop doing, just cut all the addictions away. And I said to him that if you did that, you would be having, you'd be having a straight conversation with God. Something in my teeth. And that's what started the whole thing. And, and I explained to him, like I've just explained that God, what I mean by that is that Jesus Christ or whatever, it's your evolution. It's your evolution. So why would cutting your addictions away take you straight to God? Because it exposes you. We drink, we have sex, we just fuck around, right? Let's be honest. As a means of distraction, as a means of passing the time while giving us some kind of fulfillment and happiness. But if it was real happiness, if it was tangible, long-lasting fulfillment, then we wouldn't have a hangover the next day after we went out. We wouldn't <laughs> have... Uh, after the orgasm, we wouldn't have that feeling dissipate. It would stay forever. These things come, and as quickly as they come, they go, right? Metaphorically speaking. It's not the ticket. It's not the fulfillment that's there that you can tap into, that you can breathe into. Because it's to breathe into and emptiness you first have to clear out the junk that's inside and the junk only gets cleared out when it's not distracted the junk is has to be exposed it needs to be felt and the only way you expose and feel it is in the silence in the complete presence of no distractions, just you, yourself, an empty room, and reflection. Addictions are not reflections, they're distractions. 80%, 90% of the population are happy to distract themselves. They're not very happy doing it. They drag themselves to a job they don't really like. They drink themselves into an oblivion as soon as the weekend comes. Their only excitement in the year is that holiday they've booked 12 months in advance. So that the 11 months leading up to it is just a grey zone of mechanical, robotic behavior, existence, conversation, watch the football, watch the sport, watch the news, just to make up the time until it's time to go on holiday where they get a, a glimpse of freedom. You can get that freedom without going on holidays. You can get the freedom without the alcohol you can have the personality without the alcohol the charisma the happiness your alter ego can be manicured can be controlled can be perfected without alcohol you can create your own alter ego through a sober basis and that's the biggest challenge of all 
So this video is partly for my brother from a long, long time. I'll send it to him. But it is also for the rest of you watching that your addictions may not be sex and alcohol. They could be junk food. They could be exercise. They could be your career. They could be anything that you do on a repetitive basis that you can't give up. Cigarettes, your job, or even if it's relationship to relationship and constantly needing people around you, intimately or non-intimately. If you are not comfortable sitting in a room in the very, very stillness of the silence without anything, no activities being done whatsoever, quilting, artwork, music, journaling, I'm talking about complete stillness. If you're unable to do that because it's uncomfortable, because it's boring, because it's lonely, I feel you. I feel you because the only way I could sit in the silence was with my vaporizer. Then I could sit in the silence for a long time. But that was cheating. That was cheating. And it wasn't until I had to stop the vaporizer that I had the conversation with God. And as many of you know, my conversation wasn't really a conversation. It was a uh, roller coaster of emotions that took me to the brink of thinking about wanting to die. And for anyone, especially you, my brother, that's probably watching this, you will know out of everyone that watching this that that is as far as conceivable for anyone that knows me to think that I would have that problem. But I did. And I'm glad I did. Because the conversation, as I said at the start of this video, does start off rocky and honest and not comforting at all. It does finish <laughs> very well. The conversation with God always finishes well. If you listen attentively, if you be a student of the conversation. And what that means is you sit down, you shut up, and you listen, and you feel. You feel whatever the anxiety, depression, panic attacks, whatever the shit comes up, the loneliness, the boredom. You sit there like a good little student and you observe it. You don't run away from it. You take it in. And I had to be a student of copping extreme boredom, loneliness for months on end without any family or friends to rescue me. I'm not tough, I'm not special. I had to do it. <laughs> that was, I was in another country living on my own. I couldn't, that's all I had to, that's all I could do. But let's be honest. Six months of pain that really I have to take myself back to, to, to remember it. And for who I am today, the way I see the world, the perspective I have on life, <laughs> take another six months <laughs> because it's, it's forever. My perspective on life will not change now. 
I can only see positivity. I can only see optimism. I can only see abundance. I can only see happiness. No matter what challenges I face. Yes, temporarily I'll be punched in the face and have some kind of event. Someone will die. Some kind of catastrophic event will appear in my reality. Yes, I'll be taken to the ropes. But it'll be very quick before I open my eyes and just go, what are you doing, mate? This is just a game. It's just a game. And I can only <laughs> honestly say that with conviction that this is just a game because I had the conversation with God. I faced the insecurities that I was hiding behind with smoking pot with girlfriends, with going out and doing drugs and I was hiding. And when I stopped hiding and faced the reality of my loneliness, of my boredom and had the tough conversation with myself and realised that the boredom, the loneliness was just a bullshit game. That's why I know this thing is a game because I was convinced that I couldn't be on my own. I was convinced that being bored was the ultimate thing that I wanted to kill myself. I was convinced that I wanted to die because I couldn't stand my own company. I was convinced. And then <laughs> to realise that that voice that was so convincing that wanted to end it, to realise that that voice was just so convincing that I thought it was me. It sounded like this person talking. For it to take me to the edge. And then for me to realise, well, hang on. <laughs> that same voice is giving me the optimism, the positivity, the fulfilment, the joy, the peace, the happiness, the gratefulness. That same voice is twisted, it's fucked up, it can fucking tell you bullshit and it can make you happy. If that's not the biggest game I've ever heard of, I don't know what else to say. It's all bullshit. The voice in our heads is bullshit. Now, I'm not going to sugarcoat and give you the stereotypical life coaching advice that you can choose, you know, your thoughts and you can have the positive psychology. You can, but it's bullshit. <laughs> if it's not authentic, you can't delude yourself into positive psychology. Because I'm also convinced that the voice of negativity and depression and suicide and being lonely and being bored and not being able to be by myself, that voice had its purpose as well. And its purpose was to drive me to the brink so that I could wake up and start driving in the opposite direction. And that is a game. If you haven't noticed, that sounds a lot like a game. So, I'll wrap it up. I'll wrap it up. If any of whatever I've talked about you would like me to go deeper into, because I could go deeper, but it's 19 minutes long, and I respect your time. If you want me to go deeper into anything, hit me up in the comments. If you've got any questions, fire away. The sooner you drive yourself to having that honest conversation through getting rid of your addictions, the sooner you'll be free. <laughs>